Hello again everybody, welcome back to another edition of On the Range, and today again I'm up in the F-86 Sabre, and I'm going to talk a little bit about air-to-ground gunnery in the F-86, and show some techniques for getting rounds on target using the A4 gun sight as a reference for where to aim. So let me begin, as always, by getting the cockpit set up for this gun's pass. So, I come down here to my armor control panel, I verify that my main selector switch is set to the gun's position, I also have a gun's heater switch, I'm going to leave it off, I only need the gun's heater on if the outside air temperature is below 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, these switches on this side of the panel only apply to bombs and rockets, but let me continue coming around here. I have this dial, it's a wind correction dial. I want to set it to the bottom setting, and that's the rocket and gun setting. I also have a dial that's going to control the display on my A4 gun side. I want to make sure that this bottom switch is set to the gun's position. At this point, that panel is set up, and I now have power being applied to the guns. I do, however, have one more switch over here on the left console that I need to verify is in the proper position. I'm going to set it to the all guns position, and that is going to apply power to the firing leads in the guns. I could, if I wanted to, only use the upper guns, middle guns, or lower guns, and that could be useful, I suppose, if I had a jammed gun and needed to isolate part of the system, but I'll leave it in all guns for this pass. And at this point, I am ready to set up, or I am ready to fire. All I need to do now is pull the trigger. But before I can pull the trigger, I first need to know where to aim, and I have targets down here. I have some strafe targets, I uh, have four strafe pits that I'm going to use, and I have range markers. I have a foul line at 2,000 feet slant range, and I have connex is set up at three to 4,000 feet, just to give me a, a little bit of help on this uh, range setup to gauge my slant range to the target. So what I'm going to do is use the gun sight. I'm going to leave the gun sight caged, and I'm going to make sure that the wingspan selector dial is set to 60. That's going to give me a 100 mil diameter reticle up here to use for gunnery. The center pip is at 0 mils, the bottom pip is at 50 mils. And depending on my slant range, I'm going to use a different position between the center pip and the bottom pip to fire. Now, this is going to vary based on your technique, and it's going to also vary based on how smoothly you can fly the aircraft. Ideally, you want to be in just a a 1G dive with no loads on the aircraft and what I find is that in a 1G dive and I'm going to go for a first pass at about 4,000 feet slant range what I find is that I can just use the center pipper and that's a good reference for where the rounds are going to fall on the ground. So I'm going to come around and set up for a low angle strafe on this first set of targets out here and I'll demonstrate that. I'll fire from about a 4,000 foot slant range using the center of the fixed reticle as a guide for where the rounds are going to impact on the ground. Okay, so I'll continue to climb, and I'll come back at you once I'm set up and are ready to start firing. Okay, so I'm approaching the targets. Another consideration to keep in mind is trigger control. You want to just squeeze the trigger. You don't want to jerk the stick as you're making this run. So I'm going to dive on this first set of targets. I'm going to fire at about 4,000 feet slant range. Okay, so I'm just going to put the pipper just short of the target and let the reticle walk up to the target. So just short, walk up, fire. Okay, those were just a little bit short, but they did walk up to the red general area. So 4,000 foot slant range, just use the center of the sight or just a touch below the center. And it's all going to depend on your technique. It's going to vary a little bit based on how you fly the aircraft, but that's going to get you in there close enough and get you some good hits. Now, the main thing to keep in mind is that the position on the site where the rounds fall is going to vary based on your slant range. That was from a relatively short range, about 4,000, 3,000 feet slant range. What I'm going to try now is doubling the range and demonstrate what happens when I fire from about 8,000 feet. So my reference is on the ground, 4,000 feet is about here. So these, a point right between these two bombing circles would be about six, 7,000 feet. I'll fire right before I get to that point and show what an 8,000 foot slant range shot looks like. And what I'm going to try for is getting the target right about here at about, uh, about 15 to 20 mils on the reticule. And we'll see how that works. So I'll come around on this next pass. I'll be right back. Okay, so coming back around for a low angle strafe on that same target, I'm going to fire from a longer range and I'm going to use a, a position lower down on the site to guide me in there and give me the correct place on the ground to aim. 
I'm going to use smooth controls. I'm not going to jerk the stick as I squeeze the trigger. Okay, so rolling in on the target, I want to place the reticle short of the target and just let it gently walk up. So, right about there. Okay, the rounds are coming down. And that's going to be a little bit long. Okay, the first, uh, first set of rounds did hit right about on the target, but the main point there is that you can see that before I had the target right there just below the center of the reticle and from a, a short slant range that's where the rounds fell. From a longer slant range I fired further down on the sight and the rounds did fall in that location. So this is another one of those techniques that takes a lot of trial and error. Over time you can develop your own little cheat sheet and say okay for a 4,000 foot slant range shot I want a whatever a a two or three mil setting for an 8,000 foot shot, uh, 20, 25 mils, and just extrapolate different settings for different slant ranges from there. But it does take a lot of trial and error. Technique does come into play on this, but with that, to give you a guide on the basics, yeah, just go out there and find what works for you. So thanks again for watching. I hope you did find this useful, and I will see you next time.